this is in a proper way so if you are if you can understand this process of communication if you have understood this process of communication from now on you will be much more careful in sending your message or in talking over uh, telephones like i have seen many people are uh, talking over uh, telephone to someone else and if the other person the receiver at the other end cannot understand the message then that then then this person uh, shouts at the top of his or her voice so that is not the matter the that receiver is not getting the message properly because of some noise you have to understand it unless and until you can understand it you cannot communicate proficiently so you have to understand it properly so if you understand this process of communication you can communicate in a better way so this is this was the first part of my discussion so have you understood it dear students so i have focused here on these matters that communication is sharing you have to understand it first remember it first that communication is sharing this is nothing but sharing you share anything with your fellow human beings that is an act of communication so even if you uh, give a piece of chocolate to your friend that is an act of communication you love that person that's why you are giving a piece of chocolate to that person so it is an act of communication so whenever you share with someone you share anything with your with someone it means it is an a, it is a communication this is the first thing then there can be verbal communication non verbal communication verbal where language used and where no language used but your body language is used your facial expressions your bodily expressions uh, your maintaining of distance even uh, the punctuality whether you maintain punctuality or not whether you are punctual or not that also communicates something so uh, it is also a non verbal mode of communication so there can be verbal non verbal modes of communication and there are seven components in the process of communication so you have to understand these components now the next thing that i come to is how to use english for communication so i will first cite these two examples so you are familiar with these two sentences most of you i think uh, ensure register set to zero before delivery this is the sentence ensure register set to zero before delivery you might have come across this sentence so how do you come across this sentence can you tell me anyone so if you are using motor bikes if you are using scooters i would expect the answer from you ensure register set to zero before delivery so let me tell you that it is at the refueling stations or popularly known as petrol pumps it is at petrol pumps or refueling stations that you find this sentence ensure register set to zero before delivery now try to understand what is the purpose of this sentence so it is a kind of notice isn't it it is a notice for the customers that you have to ensure that the register is set to zero before petrol or diesel fuel is delivered is delivered to your vehicle so this is the message that those refueling stations want to communicate now think of the hundreds and thousands of people who regularly visit thousands of indians who regularly visit petrol pumps i think this sentence has been in use since the time when the british people were ruling our country that means before 1947 and we continue to use this sentence even when we observe uh, mother language uh, tongue day etc so and we focus so much on the use of our mother tongue etc 
yet we continue to use the same sentence without changing anything. Now, this sentence is not at all an easy sentence. Easy means easy to understand. It is not at all easy to understand this sentence. Ensure register set to zero before delivery. There are so many uh, uh, difficult words here. Ensure, register, delivery, etc. And those people who regularly visit petrol farms, how many of them will be able to understand this sentence? What we want to do through this sentence, we want to make the customers cautious. We want to warn them. We want to make them aware that they should uh, see that the meter is on zero before uh, petrol or diesel is delivered to their city. This is what we want to communicate. So instead of meter, we use their register. So we can easily make this sentence an easier one. Can we not? Can, can we not recast in in any other way? When uh, people would be able to understand it in a uh, in an easier way, like we can say uh, check that the meter is on zero before buying petrol or diesel. If we write this, we can easily communicate the same meanings, the same message, but people will understand it in a better way. So our purpose is to communicate a message. Our purpose is to know, is not to show our knowledge of English. Our purpose is to communicate a message to those people who mostly study English as a second language, not as their mother tongue. So they learn the English language. We learn the English language not as our mother tongue. Most of us learn the English language either as first language if you are reading in English medium schools or um, as a second language, mostly as second language. So we have to communicate the message in a way that they can understand. We have to understand the level of understanding of the receiver. So if we say, check that the meter is on zero before you buy petrol or diesel, people will understand it in a much better way instead of saying ensure register set to zero before delivery. So we have to come out these patterns of using English, these age-old patterns of using the English language. We have to uh, use English keeping in mind the level of understanding of the recipients, of the learners. Another such notorious sentence is no thoroughfare. You might have come across this sentence, this notice, at the, at the entry points of many uh, big offices, uh, like um, uh, many railway offices I have seen, many CSIR institutes I have seen at the entry gates. So no thoroughfare. Now, thoroughfare is not at all a familiar word. It is an unfamiliar word. When you first come across this word, we have to look it up in a dictionary, isn't it? When you first come across this word thoroughfare, we have to look it up in a dictionary. And only then we come to know, we understand that thoroughfare means a wide road, both ends of which are open. That means if you, can, if you enter through one end, you can easily go out to another end. So that is a thoroughfare. So no thoroughfare means what we want to say, this is not a public road. This road is meant for this office only. So this is what we want to communicate. So why should we write no thoroughfare? If we write this is not a public road, people will understand it in an uh, easier way. People will be much more comfortable with that notice. So if you write this is not a public road. So why should we use an unfamiliar word? So if we use unfamiliar words, then the purpose of communication will fail. So we have to remember this. We do not want to show, we need not show our pedantry. That means we do not, uh, we need not want to show our knowledge of English, but we 
need to show, need to communicate. We need to share something with our fellow human beings. Language is a purpose, the basic purpose, the basic purpose of using any language is to communicate, is for communication. If you cannot communicate using a language, then that language will gradually fall into disuse. People will no longer use that language. People will, uh, people will uh, create other languages, like it happened with the Sanskrit language. Sanskrit language, all of you know, has a um, rich history of literature. And yet in spite of the rich history of literature, it has ceased to be used by people. Why? The simple reason is that it is, it, it became very complicated. It gradually became very complicated. It became a rule written rank language. There are rules you have to, uh, you have to maintain those rules properly. Without maintaining the rules, you cannot, you have to remember a number of declensions of words. You have to remember conjugations of verbs, then case ending rules, etc. Only then you can use that language properly. So you have to remember so many rules and Sanskrit gradually became an undemocratic language. Like in politics, in matters of uh, uh, language also, everything must be very much democratic. And English has, that ma has maintained that democratic aspect. It has maintained that democratic aspect. That's why it has survived. So how it has maintained that democratic aspect, it has changed itself with the demands of people, with the demands of the end users. Who are the end users of a language? The people. The users of the language wanted to change it and accordingly the language has changed. So if you look at something written in what we nowadays call Old English in the 8th century, 9th century, you will find that this is not English, this is something else, you will say. Then, uh, yeah, during the uh, uh, 14th century, if I remember correctly, when Geoffrey Chaucer wrote the Canterbury Tales, he was, he was hailed as the modern of moderns. Now, when in the 21st century, we go to read Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, we have to take help of modern translation of Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, as if Chaucer's language was not English. Even when Shakespeare was, was writing uh, during the uh, reign of Queen Elizabeth I and, and James I, and during that time, I think Akbar was the emperor in, in India. So Shakespeare uh, was writing at that time. And when nowadays, we go to read Shakespeare's plays, we are surprised by the unfamiliar constructions of the English language. So the language has changed. And why did it change? Because people wanted to change the language. The users of the English language, they wanted to change the language. So that's why it has survived for so many years. And it has accommodated those changes. Every year it accommodates so many words from different languages and it accommodates so many changes in the linguistic system. And that's why it has survived. So you have to come out of the age old patterns, uh, complicated patterns of sentence, construction, uh, word use, etc. And you have to make it user friendly. Now, when we talk about uh, communication in any language, not necessarily in English, we particularly focus on uh, four skills of language learning. We focus on four skills of language learning and uh, linguists, they, they abbreviate these skills as LSRW, LSRW. So, each of these letters stands for one particular skill, like L stands for listening. And listening not only means uh, paying heed to some sounds, hearing some sounds. So can you understand me, dear students? Yes. 
are there messages in the okay so i box? cannot see because uh, i think okay. uh, uh, i am sharing my entire screen okay so, sir anyway i'll see them later so uh, and there is the to... interactive session sir they will be asking okay okay so uh, lsrw this is this is a uh, this is how linguists abbreviate the four skills L stands for listening and uh, S for speaking, R for reading, W for writing. Now, uh, listening not only means paying heed to some sounds, merely hearing some sounds, it involves understanding also. Understanding what? Understanding the sounds of a language. And that's why um, a famous linguist, he instead of uh, using listening, he uh, used understanding speech that this is the skill that learners have to acquire. So listening also involves understanding speech, then speaking, reading and writing. These are the four skills, four skills, very easy. But what we have to remember that we have to acquire these four skills in this order only. That first we have to acquire the skill of listening then speaking, then reading, and then, then writing. Like if you think of your mother tongue, when we learned our mother tongue, the language that we call our mother tongue, we first learn to listen, then we learn to speak, then we learn to read, then we learn to write. If this order is broken, then language learning will be hampered. And this is what is happening with the English language, the way we have been trying to uh, teach the English language or the way our learners have been trying to learn the English language. At first we are given a book and we are told that this is a, so we have to first learn to read. Then we have to um, uh, use calligraphy, uh, that this is how A is written. This is how B is written, etc. But first, you have to fall in love with the sounds of a language. So if you can't fall in love with the sounds of a language, you can't learn that language. Like your mother tongue, you first fell in love with the sounds of your mother tongue. That means you first acquired the skill of listening. And once you love those sounds, you started speaking. So uh, first you first we acquired the skill of listening, then speaking. So listening is nothing but understanding the sounds that are spoken, that are produced in a language. Understanding the sounds that are produced in a language. And once we understand those sounds, once we begin to understand those sounds, we ourselves try to produce those sounds. So that some communication is there, so that some meaning is there. In a meaningful way, we produce those sounds. So that is the skill of speaking. Then uh, once we have acquired these two skills, listening and speaking, we go to a school or to a teacher and we acquire the skills of reading and writing. We become familiar with the letter system the alphabetical system of a language. We become familiar with the alphabetical system. So listening and speaking, these two skills are related to the sound system of a language. In the process of listening, we listen to some sounds and in the process of speaking, in the act of speaking, we produce those sounds ourselves. Then reading and writing, these are related to the letter system, or I like to call representational system of a language. So these are, so if you think of the letters of a language, you will find that these are nothing but ways of representing the sounds that we speak, that we produce while speaking. We produce some sounds while speaking. Now we want to give them some permanent shape. How do we give them some permanent shape? By representing the, them through some pictures through some drawings, like what we um, 
when we write A in the, in the English language or B in the English language, what are these things? These are nothing but, but pictures. The users of the English language, the early users of the English language, they decided that the, the sound that he produces A, this sound should be represented in this way. Or the, um, the users of the Bengali language, they decided that uh, the sound that he produces Ka should be uh, represented in this way. So it is nothing but a kind of agreement. So both the sound system and also the alphabetical system. So we become familiar with the letter system, the drawings, the pictures of the English language. So that is the act of reading. And we ourselves try to draw those pictures. We ourselves try to draw those pictures of A, B, C, etc. These are nothing but pictures. With repeated practice, we become uh, very conversant, very expert in drawing those pictures. So we ourselves try to draw those pictures. This is the process of writing. So these are very simple things, but this order has to be maintained. I have been saying it repeatedly that this order of listening, speaking, reading and writing. First, you have to listen to something English. So if you want to use the English language properly or any language for that matter, you have to first listen to that language then only you will learn to speak in that language, speak that language. Then you can uh, read something uh, written in that language. Then you can write something in that language. So this, this order has to be followed properly. If this order is broken, that, then language learning will become a tedious job, uh, will become a tiresome job, a boring job, monotonous job. So you have to maintain this order. You have to first listen to something English regularly. Like if you go to anyone, any teacher, um, uh, and you ask him or her, uh, how can I improve my English skill? You will find that that teacher will uh, tell you that um, you spend say 20 minutes every day. You listen to something English every day for five minutes. You speak with your friends in the English language for five minutes. Then you read something in the English language uh, for five minutes and write something in the English language for five minutes. That will improve your English skill. So uh, there is no substitute, no replacement to this thing, to uh, this practice, to this habit. And I have seen people that uh, people in executive positions also I have seen them that they have improved their English, their writing skill by regular practice, by regularly writing, maintaining their diary, they have improved their skill. So you can also improve your skill. This is nothing. A language learning is nothing but acquiring these skills in that language. It is very simple. Listening, speaking, reading, writing, just as you did for your mother tongue. But we never remember. We never remember how we learned our mother tongue. It, is, it seems so natural as if we are born with our mother tongue, but it is not like that. We learned uh, our mother tongue. We learned our mother tongue. We had to learn it. So why does it seem natural? Because we had sufficient exposure to our mother tongue since our childhood. One professor was talking about this exposure, giving the students exposure to the students. So, uh, we should have sufficient exposure to a language. So this is the primary condition of language learning. That if you want to learn a language, you should have sufficient exposure to, to that language. So for our mother tongue, people in our surroundings speak that language, use that language. We can easily learn that language. But for the English language, there is no natural exposure. So people in our surroundings, they either speak in, in Bengali or in uh, the Hindi language, etc. So uh, for the English language, that is why we have to uh, artificially expose the students. And where can we artificially expose the students to the English language? In the classroom. That is the place where we can artificially expose the students to the English language. 
and if you are studying in an english medium school then for all the subjects uh, teachers are using that english language that means you have more exposure to the english language so you easily learn the english language and you can use it for different subjects for vernacular medium schools you have the, the teachers have those 40 minutes or 50 minute class uh, uh, where they uh, use the english language and that's why teachers are usually told usually instructed to use the english language only during the 40 minute or 50 minute english class so that learners have sufficient exposure to that english language this is necessary this is important that exposure to a language this is a condition of language learning primary condition of language learning now i have been talking about uh, lsrw that these are our aims these are our objectives for um, learning the english language that we uh, need to acquire the skills of listening speaking reading and writing uh, for learning the english language or any language for that matter <laughs> now uh, when we say that uh, we are we need to acquire these skills these skills of listening speaking reading and writing for uh, learning the english language now uh, what what do we mean by that english language suppose uh, we i want to use the english language what will you do what i will do so let us think in a very simple way what i am doing now i am i have i have been selecting some words from the english vocabulary like in, in our bengali vocabulary bengali dictionary or hindi dictionary we have also our english vocabulary we have also our english dictionary so i have been selecting some words and according to the rules of grammar i have been making sentences isn't it this process is continuing is continuously taking place in my brain so my brain is helping me in this creative activity now that i have been talking with you my brain is regularly helping me with words of the english vocabulary and how to frame sentences in the english language there are some rules so my brain has internalized those rules and applying those rules continuously it is not that i have heard all those sentences that i am using now i am using many new sentences isn't it when we speak we do not think of sentence a sentence uh, uh, which i heard from someone else i have to remember that sentence then i have to use the use that sentence it is not like that so i create a new sentence i create a new sentence using my knowledge of grammar that i have internalized so i create a new sentence selecting some word selecting some some words from the english vocabulary or from the bengali vocabulary and i frame sentences so this creative activity is taking place continuously so we are always engaged in that act of creativity when we are using language any language you are creating something you are continuously engaged in that act of creativity your brain is creating something but you but we are so unaware of all these things as if everything is happening spontaneously it is not spontaneous but it seems to be per spontaneous it seems like a reflex action it seems like a reflex action it seems to be spontaneous it is not at all spontaneous it is it seems to be spontaneous only because our brain has internalized everything now uh, according to this view according to this principle of ls rw or how language uh, should be used so we need to produce correct sentences we need to produce correct sentences and that is what our brain does that and if I, if i speak a wrong sentence i know that i am speaking a wrong sentence an incorrect sentence so my brain 
prompts me that this is an incorrect sentence and immediately I try to rectify myself. So according to this view, our aim should be to produce correct sentences and that is why we continue to uh, do. So uh, accordingly, uh, if I say the rain destroyed the crops, the rain destroyed the crops, you will understand that this is a correct sentence. I have uh, selected some uh, words from the English vocabulary, the rain destroyed crops. And according to the rules of grammar, I have framed here a sentence. And uh, I, I say the rain destroyed the crops. And uh, since you know the English language, you will understand that this is a correct sentence. But if I say, but if I say, the is destroy the crops, or if I say the rain destroy the crops, you will understand that all these words are there in the English language. Rain destroy crops or the destroy crops, etc. But this is not a correct sentence. The the is destroy the crops, the rain destroy the crops. This is these are not correct sentences. Why not correct? Because I am not following the principles of sentence formation. Actually, these rules, these uh, rules become internalized. I do not have to look up every time in a grammar book and uh, then I have to apply those rules, etc. It is not like that. These rules become internalized and I apply those rules. We apply those rules. It happens spontaneously. So according to our principle of framing sentence, the rain destroyed the crops is a correct sentence. Now, suppose uh, uh, that uh, there is a person called A, that A approaches B, uh, B is a stranger, A does not know B in the street. Now A asks B, would you tell me the way to the railway station please? Could you tell me the way to the railway station, please? Now, B says, the rain destroyed the crops. B says, the rain destroyed the crops. So, we have said that the rain destroyed the crops is a correct sentence. But if uh, in this conversation, uh, A asks, could you tell me the way to the railway station, please? And B says, the rain destroyed the crops. We will say that B must be quite eccentric. No one in his senses would be saying something like this. So why not? Because A says something to which B replies and B's reply we understand in, uh, is not in some way appropriate to what A says, to what A asks. Now, you can say that this is something extreme. Uh, unless B is an eccentric or a mad person, uh, B would not reply in this way. So, let us make our sentences something like this. Now, suppose A asks, what did the rain do? And B says, the crops were destroyed by the rain. A asks, look at this sentence very carefully. What did the rain do? B says, B replies, the crops were destroyed by the rain. Is it an appropriate reply? So we understand, we sense that B's reply is uh, not an appropriate kind of reply. Or if A asks, what was destroyed by the rain? B replies, the rain destroyed the crops. We also sense that this is not the proper kind of reply, though an information is conveyed. And again, A asks, what happened to the crops? B says, the rain destroyed the crops. Again, we understand that though B gives the information, but this is not the proper kind of reply. So B's reply does not match with A's question, does not somehow fit in with A's question. 
Now look at another set of sentences. Again, A asks, what did the rain do? B says, it destroyed the crops. Now we understand, now we are relieved. Yes, B has given the appropriate reply. What did the rain do? It destroyed the crops. Then again, B, sorry, A asks, what was destroyed by the rain? B replies, the crops. Since B simply says, the crops. The crops destroyed by the rain, B does not say so. B says, the crops. Then again, A says, what happened to the crops? Then B says, they were destroyed by the rain. Now we understand that all the replies that B gives to A's questions, they are appropriate replies. This is effective communication. That the way you respond to something, it should match with, it should fit in with the communication that has been sent by the sender. So it has to match with. Sometimes you may not need to use uh, full sentences, like in the second example. What was destroyed by the rain? B says the crops. So simply says the crops. So this communicates something. This is effective communication. You need not say some everything. That you, uh, like uh, here in the first example, what did the rain do? He could have said the rain destroyed the crops. But B simply says it destroyed the crops. So this is what we mean by effective communication. So your communication, your English, your use of English should be, should effectively communicate your message. So how can it effectively communicate your message? You have to think of the natural situation. You have to think of the usual situations, the real situations of life where you need to use English for communication. So if you can think of the real situations, so if we can teach the learners accordingly, if we can learn the English language accordingly, we will learn English for effective communication. Like in schools, you might have come across these lessons that the teacher asks the students to use uh, a particular call words, say a uh, book, and the students say, there is a book on the table, sir, then say bag, there is a bag on the table, sir, etc. So in this way, they go on framing sentences. So they are learning some structures, but are they actually uh, competent enough to use the English language for Communication in real life, that may not happen. Because they are not using English. They are not using English for effective use in real life. So we have to create situations where English should be used for communication in real life, in realistic situations. We have to create some such situations. Only then English can be learned effectively. So we have to think in this way. We have to learn the skills of language learning, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Then we have to uh, learn how to select uh, appropriate words and how to frame appropriate sentences. Then we have to learn how to use our language for effective communication or for effective communication, for effective communication. Not every correct sentence can be effective communication, but we have to think about the situations, the context, when, when, where we communicate. And accordingly, we have to use our language, like we do in, for our mother tongue. So, uh, thank you everyone for patiently listening to me. So, what I talked about in this, uh, um, in this one hour, I think, for more than one hour I have been talking. So uh, these are the basics in nature. So aimed at the students uh, who would like to use the English language, who find that English is a difficult language, who find that it is very difficult to communicate using uh, the English language or any language for that matter. I wanted to share some basic concepts with them. So if you can understand these basic concepts, you will find that it is not at all difficult 
to use the English language or any language for that matter. So you can easily use any language for your communication. So that is what I wanted to share with the students. I hope you might have liked it. So thank you everyone again. Now if you have uh, any, um, uh, if you would like to uh, interact and I would also like to interact with you, how you like everything and uh, how, and if you have any questions, anything you can ask me. Thank you, sir. Uh, the, the lecture was like, it was very plain and simple for everyone, for all students. And for sure, they have, uh, it, it had been a help to them. Should you act as any act for this, I see, sir, the Ekane, the Ono department, the students are at the so, I am students there. Bolchi, sare, uh, bolchi, ji, if you have anything to ask, even if it is in Bengali, like uh, so many of you may not be familiar with the language, may not use the language in your uh, in pursuing the the subject that you are in. Tomra need boy need the dhai. Evom shottar shathe. Tomra prashno korte paro sarke jeta. So can we have the questions now? Effective communication. Many communication to the night. Effective. If it's all five, 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 how are you going to get benefited? You are going to get benefited. writing, reading. practice, you know. It is all about practice. It is all about the more you do it. You are going to get benefited. You are going to get benefited. You are going to get benefited. You are going to get Use kora. using it in short sentences, instructions, basics, communications. Gulo korte korte dekhe you will also. Mane, tomare inhibitions gulo bhoy gulo. It is actually skill developed. It is a skill developed. And another shabd that I did if you start talking to yourself in small small sentences, newspaper English the jodi reading ta poro, asta asta dekhe or jeep gulo thik ho jabe. Sare kotha gulo sab pratyek ta jai jai ekdom tomare detail thora thora bujiye se. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Anindita Chatterjee and Dr. Kanjilan uh, for those beautiful words. Now, I would like to add something that Dr. Anindita Chatterjee was talking about music. So, music has also its own language. Like, if you go to learn music, that teachers will say that first you have to listen to music. First, you have to listen to music. Unless you listen to music, you cannot learn it. So you have to listen to it repeatedly. You listen to your teacher, you listen to many recorded music, etc. So music has its own language also. Only then you can speak using that language of music. Like if you want to learn sitar, you have to listen to great sitarists who are conversant with the language of sitar. Only then you yourself can learn sitar. It is acquaintance. English is a little bit of 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 a little of a little bit 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 of a for his school. So, okay, what is how will you gear up to make yourself make fear that you could overcome? For you just listen to Choto Choto YouTube videos that go on effective communication, get you dialogues that go to me. They pass the small videos, you know, it will help you to me. Show no, can you show no to me? They will gradually to my boy child, to my daughter, that I can just a person that to cook. Tarun, it actually put this bab a bung basha. অন্তরের ভাবটা যদি ভাষায় প্রকাশ করতে চায় তাহলে পরিবেশের প্রয়োজন আছে এবং রেডিনেস অফ মাইন্ড যেটা স্যার বারবার করে বলতে চাইছিলেন বা বলছিলেন কতগুলো ভীষণ ভালো एग्जांपल ইউজ করে সেটা কিন্তু খুব প্রয়োজন 
আর এই প্র্যাকটিসটা যে হ্যাঁ আমি অ্যাকুইন্টেড হব উইথ আ সার্টেন ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ যেভাবে আমি আমার মাদার টাঙ্গের সাথে অ্যাকুইন্টেড যে সহজভাবেই আমার ভাগ ভাবটা ভাষায় প্রকাশ হয়ে যাচ্ছে ঠিক সেইভাবেই যদি অন্য কোনো ভাষাও ব্যবহার করি একইভাবে যেন ভাবটা ভাষায় প্রকাশ হয়ে যায় শব্দের যেন বারংবার একটা উৎস জাগে ভেতরে যেটা নাকি আমার ভাষার মধ্যে দিয়ে বেরোবে তো প্রশান্ত তুমি তোমার প্রশ্ন নিয়ে রেডি আছো আমি জানি তুমি প্লিজ নিজেকে আনমিউট করো আর তুমি জিজ্ঞাসা করো আমিংস so you know how to express your idea so uh, when you have some idea and you want to express you cannot express it in unfamiliar language but in a language like english which you have some smitterings of knowledge of even you can easily use that language you have to find a word for expressing your ideas appropriate words and you have to frame your sentences this is quite simple thing that you have to find some words sometimes it happens that we do not find the appropriate words i think this is your question that how to find the appropriate words for finding appropriate words you have to read much more you have to become much more conversant with the language you have to listen and read so when you listen and read regularly um, uh, you have to listen to something english regularly and you have to read something english regularly like why do we read newspapers because we want to become familiar the like english newspaper especially why because how to express the familiar incidents of life we can learn them from reading newspapers so if you read newspapers regularly we will find that there are many words which you can use properly you have to write it regularly you have to speak it regularly even if you do not find audience it may happen that your friends do not want to listen to you so what you can do you can you have to create an imaginary situation in your hostel room or at your home that uh, you have to visualize that you are speaking on a particular topic in front of your audience then you have to uh, frame sentences one by one then you have to speak on that topic the topic may be as simple as my home or it may be as simple as my school my teachers my professors so anything under the sun can be your topic the trees at our home um, so my parents so you can speak on anything start with the simple topics do not go for any complicated bookish topics bookish topics means i uh, think about those topics say uh, india's inflation will in, uh, affect its employment market so don't go about these topics you simply think about your own home start from your home you talk about myself you uh, you think about yourself and you speak on uh, yourself to visualize an imaginary situation then you speak on this topic and then you will find that you can easily improve so this is the way you can improve yourself your books your class everything you can think about anything these simple things this will help you to uh, uh, step on uh, the ladder of uh, success so you have to think of everything in a simple way like why did i share with you that uh, communication comes from the word communicate because this will give you the idea that communication means sharing this is as simple as that nothing complicated don't go for bookish definitions etc try to think everything in a simple way even if you are reading a book you try to write it in your own language you use your lang- in your own language for writing anything like whatever subject you are reading you might be reading geography history physical science physics chemistry anything but you write it in your own language that will improve your communication skill so okay. here santoda yes i think i am anyone uh, else yes can you take a question can you practice what dr uh, what sir has said ফাইন্ড আউট মানে একটা এক্সটেম্পল নিজের সঙ্গে 
Prashanta will practice whatever you said. Prashanta be shown meticulous. He is extremely kind. <laughs> extremely so good. No, so why? Good. There is nothing in those uh, PPTs, but uh, I, so I, 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 I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to I have to place it out with the, the words. Hmm. Amar, I might particularly ask my boy, I got a cup of water. I have to pray to you. 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 फिलोसफी And is there any other student there? Deepthi has a question. Yeah. Deepthi Bhagat. Yes. Yeah. 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 Please. Uh, Respected sir, my question is about the exposure that you talked about for students of English medium. They are more exposure than students of Hindi medium. So what should say? Uh, what should they do about this? Yes, uh, it has to be in the classroom. The classroom is the place where the teacher is required. to use the english language in such a way that students have every one of them has sufficient exposure i know that there are many um, uh, hurdles many problems many predicaments uh, like there are uh, say 40 students in a class so uh, i talked with some of the uh, the experts from the british council who uh, conduct regular english language learning sessions so uh, they told me that they deal with only 12 students or at least 20 students for a session now everyone can be given individual attention in most of the schools i find that the number of students is huge and there are problems that uh, there are less number of faculty members restrictions in faculty members also that's why they cannot make sessions also so you have to think about this the policy makers if they really want to help the students if they really want to want the students to stay in the state in their own state they have to think about these policy matters that there should be restriction in the number of students in every class in every section then uh, the teachers have to be uh, regularly trained for um, and regularly updated for teaching the courses like uh, you might remember that uh, there was this concept of learning english that was introduced uh, in the 80s i think so in west bengal so the concept was very good i i i have gone through some of the textbooks and i found that uh, most of the textbooks are well written and there is a gradation uh, in the way the the different things different aspects of grammar rules etc that vocabulary these have been taught but uh, the uh, that but many of the teachers they were so um, uh, vehemently they so vehemently opposed to that system 
that they could not get to the essence of the things. And there was one problem that the language had to be introduced at a much younger age, at least even for the skills of listening and speaking, if not for reading and writing. So uh, I think uh, Dipti, your point is uh, this, that you have to uh, think in this way, that there should be sufficient exposure in the classroom. Or you can create an artificial exposure for yourself also. Like the way I said that you have to devote five minutes for listening to something English. You can listen to an English channel for five minutes every day or even to All India Radio. So during our school days, our parents would say that it is better to listen to All India Radio because you will really devote every time, every minute, every moment to listening only. But on television, you also see. So your uh, sense of sight as, as well as your sense of hearing, both these senses are used. But you will concentrate on listening if you listen to All India Radio. Then you have to devote five minutes for speaking. So even if you would not find anyone, I have uh, told you how to uh, visualize a situation and uh, speak on any topic. Then you have to read something English, say newspaper or any English book every day. So then you have to write uh, something uh, in English. So spend these 20 minutes every day. Create that artificial exposure for yourself. Now, Samaita Guho has another question. Sir, I have a question. To build in ourselves the effective way of communication, is it necessary to talk with ourselves standing in front of the mirror beside reading dictionary and uh, increasing our vocabulary skills? Besides reading dictionary and including uh, increasing our vocabulary skills, now we do not uh, do not learn a dictionary. We do not read a dictionary for rote learning. First of all, I would like to um, clarify this: that when we come across an unknown word, unfamiliar word, only then we, uh, if we want to clarify the meaning of the word for ourselves, we. Uh, look it up in the dictionary. It is not that you have to every day uh, learn some words in the English language in this way that you have to uh, go for rote learning, for learning, for improving your vocabulary. It is not like that. Don't do this. You have to learn the language. You don't have to learn the vocabulary, grammar in that way. So you have to use, learn to use the English language. When you use the language, you yourself will understand. You, then yourself will internalize the rules. It is not that we have, uh, we always remember grammar books. I told uh, you that it is uh, not that I remember grammar books and apply the rules, etc. I look up the rules in the grammar books. It is not like that. So our brain internalizes everything. When you listen to something, when you read something, your brain internalizes those rules. You don't have to uh, learn those rules from grammar book. You can dispense with your grammar book. Don't go for grammar books. This will hamper your language learning. Okay. So you can improve your communication uh, in that way by exposing yourself for, improve, for improving those skills. Remember those skills. LSRW. In that way only. Then, Prasanthu Das, could you briefly discuss the miscommunication concept? Sometimes we send a message in a way, but the receiver receives it in another way, and it creates a miscommunication. That's why the concept of encoding is important. How you encode the message, how you convert the message um, to a language and terms which the receiver will understand. Suppose when you are explaining a concept of physics to students of class 6, you will not be using the language and terms that you will be using for uh, class 12 students. So you have to think about the level of understanding of your audience, the level of understanding of your listener. Accordingly, we have to select your terms. Accordingly, you have to select your language. That is the only way. So the matter of encoding, that is important. How? So that will help you 
to prevent miscommunication. So I hope I have clarified and uh, uh, yes, now... Sir. Thank you, yes. sir. Thank you so, so much. Thank you all for and organizing this uh, wonderful workshop. If students have You're benefited, welcome. then it will be uh, good for Absolutely, me. Absolutely, sir. They, they are there are so working. many questions and like there were questions still. We are unable to take. We are sorry for that. And yes, dear students, uh, you we may take the questions, the rest of the questions. You may put it down somewhere uh, and also mail to us to Career Counseling and Placement Cell or to Department of English. We'll share with sir and sir will definitely uh, answer those questions via mail. So don't worry. There is no issues and no worries at all. So yes, we are the, at the fag end of this uh, uh, two-day online workshop, and it's time for vote of thanks. So yes, Dr. Anandita Chatterjee, HOD, Department of English, ma'am, if you could please. Uh, I would begin my vote of thanks with a, you know, with a big thank you to Dr. Arinda Modo. Thank you so much, sir, on behalf of the Department of English and Career Counseling, sir. I would like to share the vote of thanks. I extend uh, my gratitude to our resource person. I mean, he is dear Aurindamda. So just like, I mean, it's like sounds very formal, but to us, he's dear Aurindamda, who spared time from his busy schedule to praise the occasion. It, we had the opportunity to hear you. Too. And this was an enriching experience for all of us. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to our principal, sir, IQAC coordinator, Teachers Council Secretary for being strong pillars and encouraging us in all our endeavors. I would like to thank all the faculty, the students who joined today's workshop, who have participated in the interaction. Thanks to everyone who made the first day of the workshop successful. We sincerely hope that you'll be joining tomorrow for another interesting session on communication for employment. Thank you one and all for being there today. Thank you and see you tomorrow. Good night.